Hi, good evening. Welcome to a moment by Edmund. And uh, tonight's sharing topic is actually is about turning photo to art. And uh, yes, let, let, let's uh, welcome everybody. Yes. So, so in fact, uh, I have my special guest with me, it's actually Terence. And before we actually move uh, to the next sharing itself, spend these two minutes to, to start sharing. I believe a lot of our friends out there that love taking photos, or actually, in fact, some are professional photographers. The key thing, of course, you can say, if I share with them, let them tag them, share with them, let them understand different insight. And of course, to me itself, actually, I also believe that photo can change into different format and to be appreciated. So that's why Terence is here. So let, let, let's do the sharing. Yeah. Yay. Yes. So exciting, so exciting. I've been a plan for almost like one month. I've been talking and finally, Terence got the time and uh, honor to, to come to our, our, our ask here. We actually have this session together, live together and share with us. So in fact, uh, how it come about is actually because we always wanted to, to have breakthrough. During COVID itself, a lot of time where, uh, whether it's the event stop, a wedding uh, cannot be made into bigger uh, ceremony itself. So photography business itself actually become not, you're supposed to be essential, become not essential. So in fact, it's actually, very puzzled by a lot of people that it's a skill but cannot be delivered because of the situational happening but when i look at terence itself actually in fact there's so many things that actually along the journey he transformed so the the key takeaway that tonight you'll be take away is actually in fact first thing first is actually we will learn from him how to turn photo into art second thing also i believe all of us will be inspired even when you're a photographer now or you wanted wanted to be a photographer later on or you're just a casual photographer, you learn a lot of different insights. So first thing at least, uh, uh, let, let's do a little you know, welcome again, all share already. Eh? Okay, let's welcome everybody to Moments by Edmund. And tonight's sharing topic is actually turning photo to art. And I have with me, Aaron. He's actually the artist and the founder for Art Inspire, correct? Yes. Yes, so in fact, uh, why, why this whole conversation will come about? Because of the fact that I also do research in fact, from the year 2020, last year, you, you guess what? We got 1.4 billion of pictures that are being taken and shared in the whole world itself. So 1.4 billion. The key thing actually, is it taken by a DSLR phone uh, shared as a professional project or uh, actually as a, a lifestyle uh, leisure? This is the quantity of pictures that is being taken. The key thing actually, is it being monetized? So the key thing, of course, we can say tonight is actually, in fact, we got to understand when we say turning a uh, photo into art, first thing we must ask ourselves, so what is art? So what is art? When looking at the slide itself, you can see, so what is art? When we look at art itself, right, a lot of time in my uh, layman term, art itself is, is about painting, it's about sculpture, it's about old, old uh, time where actually you master a very long time and then you do different canvas. And to me, that, that's art. And uh, maybe to, to tell you, what would you think, what was art? I think to most people in a layman sense, art is something uh, they can maybe buy or touch and bring home. And uh, most of them would be like hanging on the wall or placed in somewhere strategic where they can enjoy it every day. So um, yeah, that's to most people what art is, a yes. painting or a sculpture. Yeah, yeah, but the, the interesting part, I can see a lot of uh, like Van Gogh pictures that you can see from here, Picasso, uh, even Mona Lisa, these are very prominent pictures that people can recall. Okay, the, the, the key thing which is, of course, we want to understand the era at the point in time, but back to Singapore now, at, at this point in time, does art, been, photo been appreciated as an art? That's also my question as, as a photographer itself, is that we are actually always like a service. We are pay us for our or pay us for a project. And the key thing actually, it's like a commodity. We be selling our time and we, we do a service to somebody, somebody pay us and, and that's all. When something happens, we may lose our, our stream of flow because our event cannot be happening. So uh, for, for your case, later part to share, uh, how do we transform? The next thing actually, in fact, so what is photography? Because uh, I believe uh, the next slide that you can see, when we started, even when I started, as a photographer. You also as a photographer become a videographer. Uh, what is photography? To, to me, 
photography is actually capturing your image. And what do you think about photography? Um, well, if you Google, photography is uh, capturing of image using light. So it's it's as simple as it is. Uh. Wow, okay. Technically, it's all about light. So, so we are talking yeah. at the same lame, yeah. same uh, professional term because yeah. when I share in my other earlier session itself, same thing again, photography is actually, the photo is light. It's like a photosynthesis. Graphy is actually painting of light. So photography is actually painting of light. So, so yeah. And the next thing actually, you can, I always wanted to see how we can transform. The next, next slide you can see. Very interesting. So thanks for sharing this, this slide. I, this picture I find very interesting. When, when I got this picture and you tell me that this picture actually uh, auctioned the most expensive pictures that or is art. So to me, it, it's, uh, ask the audience out there, ask the audience out there, do you view that this is a photo or an art? To me, every morning I go and run in Pasir Ris Beach, uh, this is actually, you can shoot in Pasir Ris anytime. And, and why is it uh, art? And when you share with me, I also very puzzled. So can you share how this picture has become the most expensive auction picture? I think the, 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 the most important thing about this picture right, is he did it, you didn't. <laughs> okay. That's, okay. That's, that's basically most, uh, uh, it, it's what all, art is always, you know, there will always be people who say, hey, I think I can do a better job. But the fact is that you didn't do it. This okay. person or this artist did it. Okay. Okay. So uh, he's, he has the first mover advantage in that sense. But going back to your question, is this photo or art? Yeah. Okay. To most of us, uh, it may not look like an art. Yeah. But what is the most important thing? Is the buyer. Buyer feels that it is art. So the value and the tia is the person that yes. is actually looking at this artwork. Yes. yes. So uh, it doesn't matter is it a photo or a painting. The fact of the matter is that uh, it was auctioned off in a very big auction house. And of course, um, having said that, this is a photo, but it's actually an edited photo. Oh, okay. The artist actually removed a lot of things from this photo. When, when was this uh, taken uh, or when was this auction actually? Um, I think it is 2007, if I'm not wrong. So people are really yeah. able to use Photoshop and all this. Really, yes, yes. Uh, uh, wow, well, uh, Photoshop is, uh, is what we all know. But uh, when there was film photography, right, uh, people edit photos using uh, a, a, a pen, okay? They, they actually remove stuff or add in color to make the photo uh, more uh, in, in, in the artist's sense more complete. So photo editing has existed all along. It's the tools that uh, is, is doing the editing that has changed. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, in this photo, uh, he removed many things and he's uh, the, 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 the photographer who took this picture is called Andreas Gersk. He actually said that, um, well, if he included all those things, this picture will not look as serene as it is. So okay. uh, to him, uh, it's not pleasing. So it's not art enough. That's why he removed all those things. And uh, that's what fine art is all about. It's okay. up to the creator. And okay. it, that's what all art is all about. It, it doesn't matter if it's a photo or a sculpture or a painting. Uh, the fact that we don't associate photos with art is because we are too associated with uh, art as painting. Mm. Okay? Uh, photos, um, well, maybe not in Singapore in a, in a wide scale, but in many other countries, it's another art too. And then the next thing is question is how much is this being auctioned? You say the most expensive. I, yeah. I, 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 uh, this one? Uh, it's more than four million US dollars. Four million for this picture? Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think it would be very envy uh, and a bit of uh, it, it's called Rhine. Rhine wow. too. It's uh it's a it's a Dutch photographer and the river is Rhine River. Okay. Rhine River, oh yes. so if you it, there really is such a place. Okay. Okay. So um yeah. Wow. So so as, as a photographer myself, I look at it it's like wow. That means four point three million just for this picture. I've been taking so many pictures in the beach. Quite similar. Eh? <laughs> well, he did it and he auctioned it. You didn't. <laughs> so, but but and positively, yeah. Uh, I think both of us got chance, or even you got higher chance. You already are an artist, really. That's how I. I think I, I, I after learning for you, I may have a chance to turn into an artist. So I may have another uh artwork uh photo to become a. Auction picture at the same time. 
So it, it, it's interesting. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. So at this, at this junction, mm. actually, in fact, uh, continue to share with your friend. And I think it's very interesting that there's so many insight in photography eh, as a photographer or even somebody that you like to take leisure pictures. So we always say, even the last session that we actually uh, invited the JP, the National Geographic Photographer, you're talking about, can photo be monetized? Even you're pro or not pro, as long as your mastery or certain thing is there, right, you should be rewarded. So uh, I, I, I find this picture is also very inspiring. After hearing 4.3 million, but of course, I think with the, the change of uh, uh, things is happening, there's even more things that is actually more, more able to uh, uh, enjoy at this point in time. And at this junction, also good to actually understand more about Terence. So I, I got to know him through events, and he's actually, he was a, a table tennis association event, and he's actually the videographer. So that's where I get a like, known relationship together. So and in fact, uh, do share a bit, and uh, I believe your journey will help inspire a lot of other people of transformation. Yeah. Okay, so um, to, to cut the working life story short, I was trained as an engineer, uh, worked for a high-tech company for a while, and then I uh, got my first camera from a Christmas gift, gift exchange. Wow. And I grew to love this uh, digital photography. And uh, to the point I realized, uh, in order for me to be good at it, I, I took the leap of faith. So I uh, decided to make it a business of my own. And I became a, a so-called professional photographer and started to take jobs. So in 19, sorry, in 2016, uh, 2016, <laughs> 2016 <laughs> in 2016, I had the opportunity to uh, do a, a photography project with the Singapore Art Society. So it was a art festival, a uh, one week long festival, mm. where as the chief photographer, I would have to photo document all the, well not all, most of the key activities happening in the, throughout the art festival. Mm. So I get to interact with a lot of artists, uh, painters, sculptors, calligraphers, uh, and they are almost most of uh, who's who of uh, Singapore's art scene. Mm. So, uh, and I can get to get up close to them because the, the festival has a lot of workshops, painting workshops uh, and all that. So I get up close to them and then I can photograph and film how they actually go about creating artworks. And then I started to realize the, the painters paint artworks uh, using a technique called layering. No painter paint one object on its own uh, as that mm. what they do is they will paint layers for example they will paint sometimes you might see a, a, a painter oh, he may he may coat the whole canvas blue color that's yeah. because he's preparing for a sky scene mm. then after that he may add a, a green uh, or a, a, a blue hue at the bottom of the can the whole canvas that's preparing for the water or the sea mm. or it can be a green patch of uh, so they paint using layers and layers so what we see a, as a painting right, is actually through many layers of uh, painting by the artist. When I started to realize that, I started to ponder, can I replicate those techniques right, the in my is, photography? At the point, you're already doing very well and uh, the income, no problem, and videography, photography, you all, all chakali already at the time. Uh, then, then what makes you want to, to learn more at the point in time? Okay, but um, as, as usual, it's <laughs> tan So okay. we especially when you, you're talking about something so technical we want to go to a next level if there's a next level yeah yeah so make sure, make sure. and then i have since i have this opportunity uh to go up close with all these artists i find that i work very intriguing so i started to experiment uh, using uh layering technique with my photography and uh mm. it took almost two years wow to Try and through try and error through research, uh, actually m a, a big fundamental uh, technique is called uh, multiple exposure. This mm. technique has been all along uh, available, uh, been around in photography. Is in it called HDR? Uh, no, no, it's not HDR. It's uh, exposing multiple uh, pictures into one frame. Okay, uh, okay. I believe you yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. But uh, it's just that most of the time this technique has been used uh, in camera. Okay, so what happened is that because uh, nowadays uh, computers are so uh, 
convenient mm. and the features are so so uh, uh, advanced now i can actually replicate this multiple exposure technique on a computer and mm. and not only that i can extend the the depth of it uh, to many many layers of pictures wow i think it's very, very interesting if yeah. you're a painter the key thing actually in fact a painter can also be a, a next level of uh, uh using photo the same idea that you had the foundation of layering can also turn into another different form of art and of course as a photographer itself uh, from what i hear itself it's another new technique that actually is layering so to me it is something new but uh, in the in the the singapore context or in the whole world is it been very well widely widely been used in um, layer, this layering I'm, I'm i don't know whether is it widely uh it's widely available for sure okay. because it's a technique that anyone can uh can pick up uh if they want to look into it uh. but uh as far as i know uh, not that many uh photographers do this professionally because uh it's it's both tedious and at the same time uh, very time consuming so uh for example you may have to stare at a screen for hours on end just mm. to make one picture and uh it is not always uh uh, uh what you call it uh, it may not be fruitful every attempt okay mm. i i have destroyed a lot of artworks this is why in fact yeah. those audience out there in fact we always see the tie guo at the end of the result or what he is now the artwork is that but eventually it's the process of how he, he overcome how he actually spent two years of mastering and now you share man you you, you do so many pictures and cut this all, all, all. Uh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah too many hard disks, too many hard disks. Yeah. so all these are effort and time yes. and of course we, we also can uh, see what, what is art again i go back to the next slide again uh, so to, to continue again so like uh when you look at uh, art the next slide is actually talking about art is, is what we call yeah. so <laughs> in a nutshell art is anything you can get away with so, so it, it's it's a it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek joke um this actually this definition actually goes back to you asked me why the picture was four million dollars right yeah so why not yeah yeah so um uh that's that's the thing about art uh there's no benchmark and of course uh having said that uh uh it really depends on the artist or the the creator in in that sense interesting i think uh with, with this this uh sharing itself in fact uh i also feel that uh if you were to learn something and you actually become mastery yourself you have your your self-worth and i think people appreciate at the same time so of course i can say in terms of uh uh people looking at your work itself what's the most expensive uh uh art piece that you actually sold at this point in time uh, i haven't read for about three million yet right <laughs> yeah. maybe one day maybe one day um well i think the the largest uh that i've sold is for a collection of eight pieces to a hong kong collector wow so uh so it was it was kind of like a breakthrough um, wow. in a sense that um previously it has always been um uh, small quantities and then uh i met this really very kind uh, collector i have never met him actually it was online online yeah so the technology um, help yeah so he he interestingly he actually sent me a message on uh, uh saying that um you remember the hong kong uh, riots yeah hong kong so riot, there are yeah. many foreigners uh some foreigners uh, i wouldn't don't dare to say many yeah, yeah. some foreigners are uh, decided to pack their bags and uh, leave hong kong so there's this i got this message that uh, this portuguese who has been stationed in hong kong uh wants to go back home but he wants to bring back something uh memorable about hong kong uh, and photos are just the straightforward photos are just not good enough for him Mm. and he wants something artsy mm. so he couldn't find anything uh, but he came across uh, my work in uh, uh, artsinspire.com okay but i i can remember i back then i still don't have anything on hong kong so he actually dropped me a casual casual message 
asking me whether do ah. I have anything on Hong Kong because ah. he liked my Singapore artwork. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so I thought uh, this is just one of those uh, inquiries. So I sent him eight pictures. Hong Kong pictures? Yeah, because I have a collection of Hong Kong okay, pictures. Okay, okay. And it took him almost immediately wow. uh, to reply. And his, I, the, his reply was, I want all of them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it, it was, uh, I should have sent him 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very, very interesting story. It's like, we, we always say, you yuan ren, uh, in any picture itself, people will see value and some people may see it as a trash, but some people will see it's so appreciated that it actually belong to the person that can feel it. I think and the next thing actually, as, uh, as, as this session, I think a lot of people also want to find out how, or is there a step, or is there a formula, how we can actually learn from you uh, to create from photo into art. So that's also what I want to toast you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think yeah. um, a lot of uh, what I create using this technique, right, has to fall back on what I have experienced as a photographer. Um, I think a lot of times, or I would say for myself, when I started photography, right, uh, my idea was to be a photographer, I will capture what's in front of me. Yeah. Three. you know uh and i i must do it very well to qualify myself as a photographer then subsequently when you start doing it then you realize actually this process can be reversed meaning you can actually have an image of what you want already hmm. and then you as a photographer go and make it wow so, so still to let me, things happen you make things happen yes so uh a lot of times i i realize hey, when i start doing this method of photography right it's a lot easier because I get to shoot what I want by creating wow. the scenes that I want. Yeah. And I get to what my clients require faster. As opposed to example, if you're in a in a in an event, if you just let things flow as it as it is, right, you may never get a chance to get the pictures you want. For example, the CEO may be always mingling with somebody, yeah. or you know, uh this important person may not be at the right place that you want. So do you wait for him to move to the place you want, talk to the right person, or can you actually arrange control, for the thing to happen? Control. So you actually can yeah. control that. It re I realized that actually photography can be done that way. It need mm. not be waiting for things to happen. You can make things happen. Mm. And going back to the artworks. So right now, uh, as far as the artworks are concerned, it is for me it always starts with a image in mind mm. uh um wow, wait, wait. this is uh Jorel china i already asked where is this uh, hong kong picture uh where where is it what does it display this so, so people got interest really yeah. okay so of course uh you didn't bring the art piece and yeah we can show you pictures can, can we visit the website, uh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where's the website <laughs> uh it's www.art uh, inspr artinspire.com okay it's inspr uh, without the e yeah, without, yeah, the, e, yeah. without the yes okay I okay yes 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 so so uh like you mentioned continue the the, yes. the, the uh, tips uh I, yeah, I so, I, just now earlier you mentioned you so, created... if, so i have a picture of what i want to create so is that the slide that you actually showed earlier uh, the pointers so so let, let's look at your pointers uh, okay. uh, is it this the one yes 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 uh, so I start with a uh, a place, an image that I or a place of interest that I have. Okay. And so it, sometimes it might be quite hard to believe, but I actually have that image in mind first. The the one with the the with flow all of people. Of yeah. people. Oh. Okay. But that's how it is for me right now. So after that, I will research into the subject matter. So for example, uh, on the bottom one, it's actually a Tokyo subway image. So, oh, so um, to Tokyo, always people have the thinking that yes. it's so congested. Yes. Traffic is so, so fast. Yes. So your, your idea actually is capture that yes. and become an yes. artist. Yes. So that's how it works. Huh? So uh, after that, you will visit the location, walk the grounds. Um, that's the actually the key thing. You get inspired on the ground uh, and see how things flow on the ground. And these are actually important uh, elements to help me create the final artwork. Then mm. up, so from there, I will get the different images, uh, perspectives, uh, the right kind of images that I have in my mind to form the final image. So if 
just briefly, like for example, uh, um, every picture has to tell a few things, yeah. right? When, where, how, and what. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, uh, these are the four elements that I always try to keep within beat my pictures or my artworks. Okay. That's why, uh, uh, because to me, I, I, I want context to an uh, image. So, there was a story behind it. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah. so it is not just good enough to have a nice picture. I believe uh, now most people can take nice pictures. Yes. So, how do, how do I differentiate or how do we differentiate from others? So that means to say, can, can I say, with these six pointers, uh, we practice, practice, uh, our, our photo should be able to become an art. If we actually have this uh, concept to begin with, have a thoughts to, to put into perspective. Uh, yeah, art is anything you can get away with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my tonight takeaway. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's how it works. Uh. Uh. So from there, after I get all the images, I will layer them. Uh, layer them and adjust each layer uh, differently. Mm. Okay, and sometimes surprises happen along the way. Okay. So actually, if you notice, the whole process is not that different from a, a painter. A painter may start started off painting certain things, but the final image right could be very different from what he has in mind. But because as a, a painter or as I do my layering, I realize there are some elements that you love it so much right mm. that you want to have it no matter what so layer by layer okay you do this or i do this okay and then uh eventually um what determines a final work right it's a, a few things and most of the time it's always about aesthetics uh. it needs to look pleasing uh because to me art has to be there are, there are some some people who write actually art has the effect of curing a soul right mm, or calming yes. a, a soul correct, correct. so uh in that sense i would like my work to be of that nature okay. uh, so maybe sometimes if you research online right you may find uh, uh works that using similar concepts mm. but uh, the, the 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 thing i find about fine art photography is most of the time they dwell on uh, sorrows, uh, uh, sadness, depression. Uh, wow. uh, I, I believe a lot of people will, will agree with it because most of the time, right, when you look at, uh, example, photo exhibitions in Singapore, it's always earthquakes, disasters, human, uh, human catastrophes. So they actually bring out the emotional part. Yes, but that. it's always about sad emotions. Mm. So for your, your yeah. perspective, actually, you should so bring out the life So for me, if you look at my work, oh. like, most of it is uh, very colourful because uh, it, it's, I, I want it to be a happy thing. Uh, so, so that's why uh, colour is a major part of my work. I so, do black and white also, la, but <laughs> colour is... Uh, I mean, because I feel that colour is brings out a lot of uh, uh, raw, uh, feel-good emotions. Mm. Not that black and white is, is anything uh, worse, yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah. just that uh, that's how I chose to, to do my images. So maybe you can share some of your artwork and share the, to the audience, in fact, how you actually come about and uh, what, what is actually the whole train of thought. So okay. maybe the first picture that you shared earlier. So, uh, let, let, let's see. So for me... Um, this is Kepa Tamina. Kepa Tam so for me... Pa uh, Panjang. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, um, wow, so colorful. For me, uh, because I'm Singaporean, yes, I base here, yes. So, uh, I most of my the largest collection that I have is all about Singapore. Uh, I like to tell Singapore story through my images, mm. uh, But um, I I don't want to dwell on the struggles. The, the riots and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, that's why um, uh, I chose a few topics that I, I, I think are very um, representative of Singapore's development. Uh, Capital Terminal so is one of them. So the busiest port in the world uh, yes. for the last... Yeah. Yes, and, mm. and, and Singapore being the busiest port, right, I think uh, 
it deserves a uh, artwork from me. <laughs> in fact, in fact, this is scenery. The the next maybe three to five years time, uh, you'll be gone because you'll be going to Sinoko or Tuas, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and exactly because uh, I know well they have dismantled everything already, right? Almost. Almost. So uh, too bad. If you want to make something like this, no more. <laughs> <laughs> so this one will be another priceless uh, uh, work again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So don't don't worry. You want a bid for four million dollars? <laughs> I can help you to promote, but I yeah. think I, I believe those who actually work there or stay around there or pass by there, eventually when the, the thing is gone, we're actually talking about the moment and memories, and this picture will become something that they can relate and feel that wow, I, I will it's like a memory lane. Uh. Yeah, this yeah, this so actually uh, I submitted this in a photo competition in a UK photo competition. Yeah, in a UK. okay. So it was uh, it didn't win, uh. but it came out in the uh um selected for uh they call it uh selection category okay uh 38 pieces uh of work was selected into this pool where they will pick the winners from the whole world uh, yeah it's wow. a international so uh and then the 38 pieces was exhibited in a fullerton hotel oh. art gallery oh so uh yeah so i think uh um I was so lucky. Must be very, very meaningful to, to you at this point. In time. Actually, Capo, the 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 container pots are meaningful to me because I I think I remember Lee Kuan Yew used to say that um, he was kind of like apologetic that why Singapore didn't invest a lot into education when we during our formative years uh, because there are education. people who criticize him that why why invest more on effort seaport and not education we have limited resources ma. but education i thought is, is one of the it's, key focus yes yep. but we invested more in airport and seaport mm. his his analog his reasoning was if we can't create jobs we have graduates for what ah okay okay yeah. so 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 uh that is why we pour a lot of resources into all these things and uh i mean we are now the center where for trans treatment and everything so uh one of the reason why i i, I find great. that i have to make some effort to do this great i believe this picture will actually can resonate to a lot of other people that really can appreciate and we will really you really don't have somebody see value uh, this is something that people appreciate yeah the next first thing, copy was sold already first copy is yeah. already so okay next thing i'll ask you later on okay next next, next, <laughs> next picture next picture i think it'll be good okay wow chinese new year is coming okay. So, so um, this was taken during COVID. <laughs> no, 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 no. This one is actually this uh the the standard size for this one has been sold out for quite a while. Wow. Because uh I mean this is Chinatown, this is iconic. Okay. Uh I don't think there's any Singaporean artist uh who would who don't have a Chinatown art art piece. Yeah, in his collection. Yeah, in fact, there's one artist that I saw always on Facebook that is always stationed there to paint. Yeah, it's my friend. Oh, it's your friend, huh? Yeah, yeah, atong, a big, atong, a, atong, yeah, big piece of uh, yeah. Chinatown down scene. Yeah. yeah. So but, you, you know, he's there always painting Chinatown, yeah. and it's a so Chinatown is actually a favorite subject for painters. Okay. Uh, because I think almost I would think ninety nine percent, if not hundred percent, of all tourists will somehow pay a visit to chinatown so in this picture itself how you actually start thinking about layering and uh is it is chinese new year and why not other hotel location um of course chinese new year is the period where they decorate it the most okay so it is uh yeah. probably one of the better times and uh um where you can have all the the decorations lanterns or whatnot hanging across across the different buildings so it gives the image uh some vibrancy mm. and uh so I, I i remember this piece one of the buyers uh she the moment she saw this right she bought this why and yeah good wow. question i wow. i was very curious so i asked her why she's an austrian wow yeah. so you worked for singapore for a while uh before going back i think her husband works here so okay, okay. she so um curiously i asked i asked her the same question yeah, why? why 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 this picture yeah. so she said oh it reminds her of her growing up years living in one of these streets wow so 
I, I didn't realize that the, sometimes right, pictures or artworks have this kind of effect. It was not an intended, intended uh, effect, but that has, it, yep. that happened to, to this buyer. Interesting, That's yeah. interesting. So that means to the, the, the person, which same thing that I mentioned is Yuyan Ren and the person can resonate. Yeah. It's actually, they appreciate your artwork even so much itself. I mean, yeah. different people buy things for different reasons. Yeah. So, uh, this is Tommy was saying this, this art piece was, looks so real. So, in fact, it, it's, it's real. real. It's, it's, it's real. Photo. Yeah. <laughs> but I think because of the techniques that just now you share the six step, right? It's about layering, it's about uh, uh, adjusting the color itself. And it turn out this way, which I also appreciate that it become an art. So, in ordinary, I can take and bring my phone, bring my camera, I go to Chinatown and take a, a scene like that. It's just one picture one scene but because of the layering itself it looks so vibrant and so much activities so interesting okay so the the last picture that you you share what was the last picture again and why why how, how does it come about uh okay this one peranakan wow, uh, who, who don't, don't love peranakan uh, <laughs> yes, yes yes hello uh, um i think uh photography has this power to document right yeah yeah so uh uh um peranakan is actually our part of our heritage, heritage. you know and uh and do you realize their buildings are so beautiful yeah the, the detail of yeah. every every part of the so the during my itself. yeah so during my videography years right i actually had did uh, quite a fair bit of work for ura and uh there was one session whereby they talk about uh preserving our heritage mm. so the, the speaker talked about how actually um back then they fought so hard to conserve this way to conserve this whole street yes and wow uh, not many people know about this but uh when when our government when lky started uh to take over running Singapore, right? Yeah, into he a was city, so uh, determined. determined to make Singapore a modern city. Ah. We start to build and build and build. So and at one point, right? Yes. They are, you have to demolish to yeah, start building. I right? remember last time there's a national library. Yeah. So a, uh, a at, at one point, yeah. right? Uh, the destruction, the, the, the demolition rate of uh, all these houses uh, was so high that uh, based on some calculation right within 10 20 years right we will have zero uh heritage building so much but thanks to ura are yeah. the one that they have this yes uh, uh not ura back then was uh, uh tourist promotion board oh okay thank you so thanks. uh yeah. they form a team of people to convince our government that um there are things worth preserving so but this, this picture itself when you when you think about it itself, there's so many other buildings itself. Why why you choose these two particular buildings? And why there's a five and number seven? And to me, I look at it, it's really look like a painting. Yeah. The color is so vibrant. It's like hand hand painting than a photograph itself. That that it's five and seven because there's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> so you no, every single unit. <laughs> no, um, of course, um, I'm I'm trying to use my technique to present our heritage. Mm. And I think uh, Peranakan heritage is a, a a very colorful heritage that fits my my liking, yeah. and uh, a lot of people um, 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 are also very intrigued with Peranakan. Yeah. And and if you re really were to look at the Singapore map, right, there are not that many well preserved Peranakan buildings, uh, architects ar architectures around. That's why I like about uh photographer or even like what uh, Terrence is sharing. Mm -hmm. Everything is actually is, you from the photograph itself. There's a lot of history, mm -hmm. and from when you're talking to somebody that actually appreciate, you don't just see a painting. There's so many story behind the painting itself. Yes, and so, actually yeah. through doing all this work, right, I learned a lot about all these places also. Uh, there are Chinese influenced Peranakans. There are Malay influenced Peranakan mm. buildings. There are uh european influence peranakan buildings oh, the, 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 and the way the way yeah. uh, how, how terrence share i think yeah. uh, sure got a lot of people out there our audience will actually feel that like i should get one of these paintings yeah. i should get one of these paintings so that there's just too many the, the, uh, the next question i also the few because we, we left five minutes uh, yeah. moving so fast okay i mean we plan for one month and then actually it's happening left five more minutes yeah. so the key thing actually 
when we say compared to painting, painting actually you you want draw one painting, you sell it. It's only one one piece. If you duplicate, you say copy. Mm. But the thing for photography is that you can reprint right. So like what is behind me right? All this, mm. all this actually is printed. It's layered, and it's actually can be multiply printed. Mm. Then it becomes like a poster. How do we control the quality? How do we ensure that the buyer will not feel uh, disadvantaged? Like, hey, the next person will have the same painting in my house and eventually it's like IKEA poster, then how? Okay, uh, very good question. Actually, uh, it's a very valid question. But I have to ask you the same question again. Yeah. If you are a painter, yeah. can you paint the same piece again? Cannot. Why not? But it would be different, really. The, no, the, no, no. the layering would be different. Really. I, Color. I ever asked a, 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 a painter, a very uh, well known veteran painter. He has a very nice painting, and then he told me it hurts him so much. It, he, it hurts to sell that piece because he liked it a lot. But then I said, So you didn't sell it? You know what he said? I sold it. I sold it. Well, then, I can then repaint. Then he said, I can repaint the same piece. Ah. Wow, I always believe that uh, it's very valuable for painting because only one piece and the whole world is only one, one piece. Because you're looking at the artwork, not the artist. Uh, okay. Okay. Art, artwork starts with the artist. Okay. Right? Okay. If you were to objectively say, right, because for me, I sell limited edition artworks, right? Hmm. And right now, most of them are, in fact, all of them are limited editions of eight. Okay? Eight pieces. Yes. Explicitly, I, I write in a contract. It's only limited editions of eight. Can can they have different That's, size? Huh? Can they have different size? I have only have three sizes. I see. Okay, the larger size editions of six. So this is considered as a this is a standard size. Standard I have size. A, a large and a collector size. Okay. But uh, explicitly is written as limited edition artworks. But does a painter tell you it's a limited edition painting? He doesn't, right? He doesn't, uh, so yeah. if he sold a popular piece, he can paint another piece. If he is good enough painter, he can paint an exact piece. Mm. Right. So to me, it's not about copying or replicating. It's the integrity of the artist behind the artwork. Okay. Yep. Uh, there are photo uh, uh, artists who sell online and says limited edition artwork of 500. And it's not limited edition. <laughs> you know? Yeah, good, good that so, you control the... Yeah, the so it's... it's, itself, it's, yeah. Ma it's it's a matter for the artist and yeah. integ integrity is uh, forms a big part of it. Uh. So that integrity is very important yeah. and uh, because it's still limited by it. And uh, if a good things are actually being shared, you don't just en enclose into your lot, lot, your safe, and actually waiting for it, it should be appreciated by slightly more family. So actually, in fact, you have it itself and it's controlled. And I like the fact that when you share it's controlled, it's not, it's like it, it can be anyhow duplicate, then it become. Uh, not so priceless itself. Um, yeah. Well, scarcity yeah. is actually one of the traits of art. Okay. Uh, but don't make it so scarce, ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I think at, at this juncture, and I, I, I believe even myself, I feel inspired because you know, the uh, photo, in fact, can become an art. In fact, uh, especially as a photographer itself, a lot of time we are selling service, we are selling our time. But eventually, if you put in more time and effort, you can inspire, and in fact, you can actually create some value to even the person that buy your art. But to the person actually, whether they miss out the, the old time and they look at the pictures, it's actually, you can associate. The key thing actually, in fact, is a, is a value to that. And I really thank Terence for this whole session. In fact, I believe we inspired more people out there that, you know, they, even as a photographer out there, even I got friends that photographer out there, do, do have different options. Whether is it for your, your works itself, or even different business opportunity to create a different artwork itself, always have breakthrough. So I'm really thankful for uh, Terence for sharing. So the next Thank thing you. again, uh, where, where's the next milestone during this COVID? Now I believe this COVID will continue for another one and a half year. I don't think you can travel. So is there anything that you have in mind so that the audience can follow you in your Facebook? What is next that actually they can see from your artwork? Actually, uh, to simply put, right, stay at home, make more art. Huh? <laughs> But well, you must move out, right, to, to look at certain things? Uh, yeah, within safety constraints. Uh. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so uh, thank you so much, everyone. And I uh, really appreciate uh, Terence for sharing. Remember the six pointers. And at the same time, if you can't remember the six pointers, because you already tagged the page, share the page, go back again. That's why I like when you share the page itself. Uh, go to RCA1969, share the page again in your timeline. You can rewatch again. 
And it's usually the killing you can share to get to the Yuyuan and more friends that will require to have all this enlightening. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you. We, uh, look out for the next uh, moment by Emma sharing session again. So thank you, Ter Terence. Thanks. Okay, for thank you, everyone. Me. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.